Well, thanks everyone. Uh, hello and welcome to Laudio's Thought Leadership Series. Today's webinar is Nurse Leadership Competency, Transition into Practice. My name is Tom Hills. For those of you leadership webinars, Lanio is an AI-powered platform for frontline managers that triggers opportunities for interaction and intervention, which drive employee engagement. Our mission is to help hardworking frontline managers, especially nurse managers, become transformational leaders. Everyone is currently muted on the call, but if at any time you have a question, please type it into the question box and we'll answer them during the Q&A following the presentation. We are recording today's presentation and we'll distribute it to participants after the call via a link that will be embedded in an email. So be on the lookout for that over the next day or so. Please feel free to share the email with your colleagues who are unable to attend today. This webinar, along with others in our series, can also be accessed at laudio.com knowledge. At this time, I want to introduce our presenter, Jennifer Hargraves, DNP, RN, NEBC. Jennifer is Senior Analyst, Pathways to Excellence. She has an extensive background in managing enterprise implementations of healthcare policies and procedures in the areas of nursing and education. She's also excelled in operationalizing and evaluating comprehensive teaching programs for specific patient populations while coordinating delivery of health services within community hospital settings. Visionary nursing leader, both at the state and national level, as past president for Delaware Organization of Nurse Leaders, Jennifer developed a strategic plan for revenue generation, membership enhancement, and participation. Jennifer establishes rapport and engages people with relevant processes and builds relationships with a diverse range of stakeholders. Prior to serving in her current role at Pathway Senior Analyst, she served as the Education Program Specialist for the ANA Product Development and CE Department. Welcome, Jennifer, and we're thrilled for you being here. Based on the size of our audience, we've got an ex exciting topic and a lot to cover today. We plan for 30 minutes of your time. So Jennifer, I'll now turn the presentation over to you. Thank you so much for that. I sound pretty impressive. I'm pretty excited about that. I'm very humbled to be here, and I have to say I'm very excited about the uh, amount of attention that this did receive. I'm very passionate around the nurse leadership competency and transition into practice. Uh, for me, it became very relevant and a necessary concern when I actually transitioned in my own formal res um, leadership uh, title. And when they handed me a binder and pretty much left me on my own, I thought, is this normal? I don't think that's normal, but uh, it kind of caused me to start looking at it differently. So I also then decided to engage this as my DMP project as well. So I'm again, very excited. We'll be doing a high level overview, but again, hopefully we'll all walk away with some actionable items and things that we can take away. Uh, for the next slide, I just want to do a brief disclaimer that by participating in the webinar, ANCC does not make any expressed or implied warranties, representation or endorsements of products and services, or the use of the products and services provided by the Laudio company. Okay. So I always like to start off with this, and I hope you'll all humor me. I love to do a scenario. And at this moment in time, I would like for you to all imagine yourselves as being champion mar marathon runners. You're the top of your game. You're setting the pace for most of your competitions. You're a leader. You're blogging. People are coming to you for advice. You're nationally known. You're at the top of your game. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself as a manager and also cycling um, team manager for an international group. We're very well known. We place in all our races. You might have heard of us. I also am having some issues. I have a cyclist that's down. I can't seem to find anybody to replace them. Nobody with any experience. But I'll tell you something. I've been watching you. You're one dedicated, passionate. Everybody listens to you. You're a thought leader. People are watching you. And as an athlete, your passion is bar none and your commitment. So I approach you with this beautiful bike, state of the art. And I'm going to ask you, hey, if you'd be willing to, I think it'd be great if you could maybe see how you do. Try it out. See if you don't like cycling. We'd love to see you become a part of our team. I think you've got what it takes. I think your drive and passion, your attitude is exactly what would our team needs. Now, the irony to this is you were actually thinking about diversifying your portfolio. And you just said to your friend the other day, you know, I think I should try another sport. Maybe have a two-sport portfolio. I think that'd be really great. It would strengthen my portfolio. 
So you go ahead. You think it can't be that hard. But the caveat is you've never ridden a bike before. But you know people who have, they'll probably help you. You can't use training wheels because the way the bike's set up, they don't hook right and it's just going to be a mess. But you figure clunky at best, you'll give it a shot. And actually, you do really well. And I've been watching you. Two weeks out, you are amazing. You are doing great things, even uphill, setting the pace. You're doing awesome. Well, my luck has not gotten any better. Another one of my team members has gone down. This one, one of our top performers, he was actually in one of our main races for the year. We're already excited to come in the top three. I don't know what we're going to do. But after watching you, I think, you know what, there's enough time. I really think if we put you in there, you're going to do fine. So I'm approached you and you feel comfortable being a part of our team, but here I'm gonna tell you that I think you're okay and we're gonna go ahead and put you into this race. You've got plenty of time to get ready. We're gonna give you a team of people to support you. Just be aware they're a little fickle. You just have to, you know, fake it till you make it. We don't want them to know that you're not as experienced, but you'll be fine. We can't really afford to lose anybody. And I'm gonna be out of pocket because we're short. I'm gonna to have to do some triathlon training. But again, I think you'll be fine. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the race, but it's the Tour de France. But don't worry, because but you have to come in the top three. So the reason I like to start off with that is that it's starting to go, it's starting to landslide. Like, what, what, what are we doing? What's happening? I want you now to put in a different place. The marathon runner is your clinical expert at your unit level that everybody goes to, is change agent, everybody loves them, respects them, your go-to person, hands down. Now I want you to transition them into a cycling position, but that is actually a new formal leadership role, a nurse manager and an assistant manager role. And the people that now are the team to help them, but they have to fake it till they make it is their new unit that's now reporting to them and they have to figure that out. And then that Tour de France and those top three placement, that's the patient satisfaction. That's the press gainy. That's the, the employee satisfaction. That's the quality initiatives. That's pay for performance. And when you put it in a different pocket, I think it takes away the white noise because I think right now with nursing leadership competency and transition into practice, it's become white noise. We kind of take it for granted when it's one of the biggest things we should be focusing on right now. So moving on into some fun facts. Approximately 55% of nurse managers are planning to retire between 2011 and 2020. We're almost into 2020 now. I think most of the organization and why this is so um, hot of a topic right now is because I think most organizations are feeling the, the push of this. And when we look at it even harder, there's not a lot of people in line to want to take these positions. So when we look at the turnover, we remember that when we don't have leadership and we don't have people in the pipeline, it's going to influence our frontline nurses as well. If nobody wants to manage or lead them, do you think they're going to want to stay there? They're not going to have the guidance and support that they need. And as well, that vacancy is going to affect your nursing outcomes, your quality of care, your patient safety. And of course, who's there now to establish metrics that need to be met on that unit? That's essential. All right, so when we talk about this and we talk about that transition into practice and the competencies, this is why this is so important. And we all know these things, but it's still occurring. Now, of course, staff unrest and loss of focus on the strategic priorities will lead to, again, the, the unfavorable patient and organizational outcomes. And I always preface this, um, nobody, any of this is never done maliciously when an organization transitions, you know, a clinical expert into a formal role. Uh, next slide. But when we talk about the burn, burnout of the nurse manager and also the turnover, we can't deny the fact that right now, some hospitals are seeing a rate of 50% or more, and I'm sure there's some right now on this call or this program that are nodding their heads or they're close to it. They recognize that this is going to occur and that even if they fill positions right now, the trajectory of them staying beyond five years is, is not high. Um, it's not in the days of, of yore where they were staying for 10, 15, 20 years. So with that being said, and the vacancy on the rise, realizing now it's going to become more difficult to recruit to these positions, right? Because if you also see that there's a high turnover, do you want to go to that or place to work? And then, you know, obviously, if it takes longer to recruit, it's more resources. And you're looking at costs that range anywhere from $132,000 to $228,000. And that's just an estimate. So these are numbers, remember, to write down and keep in your back pocket because they're important for you as you strategically try to determine how you're going to structure. Okay, next slide. So why is the investment so important? So again, we've already talked about that clinical expert um, into that formal nurse leader, role manager, assistant manager. You know, 
due to the demand, and again, it's not maliciously done, organizations honestly wholeheartedly are grooming from within, which I think is beautiful. But if it's not done with a structured intent and with a way to support these individuals, we set ourselves and the individual up to fail. So without that nurse manager leadership training, there's a negative impact not only on themselves, but on the unit. And I want to bring up the self-worth because I think this is something we neglect because without that structured format, everything just kind of gets plopped very quickly. And I want you to remember Sally, who's that clinical nurse expert that's at the bedside at the top of her game, was thriving where she was, transitions into a formal setting, and isn't doing well. She's not succeeding. And I'll be honest, because most of the time we have failed the transition. And what happens to her self-worth? And what happens to her wanting to stay in the organization overall, because now she feels like she's not been able to support something that everybody expected her to. And she don't, doesn't know she can transition back to clinical expert. So if you look at the bigger scope of this and you look at it from your, your trans, you do it within, you need to be very careful because there's a lot more at stake. So again, you know, we, we take for granted as we talk again about the clinical experts, we see them and, and we, we think, okay, they're great clinically. We think they're going to be awesome. People are listening. They're thought leaders or change agents. The problem is they're not prepared for the formal um, themes of leadership. And I speak from my own experience. I had never dealt with a budget for a unit. And I have to tell you, thank goodness it was clinical education because that budget's a lot different than having um, a 70 a 70 teamed up unit that you've got to figure out FTEs and all the productivity for it. And then you have to figure out how to validate and get more people if you need it for the unit. And, you know, again, they're not ready for that. Then here's human resources. Now, when I first took the position, I remember somebody said, get ready. It's going to become personnel. I remember thinking, well, that's, that doesn't make sense. Like what? I've got three people reporting to me right now. So it's going to be fine. I, I kid you not, three weeks later, I was suspending somebody for three days, and I thought, this has got to be a joke, <laughs> but I wasn't prepared, and fortunately, I was able to reach out to people to walk me through what I needed to do, but I wasn't prepared, and then again, I, I talked about, you know, the quality initiatives and safety initiatives. Some of that stuff just kind of starts to spiral, and you don't realize all of the other things that you've got to pay attention to, so it's really when you start to think about it, your head swirls. It's a lot different than being at the bedside. So again, without often becoming formal leaders without that structured guidance and support in the transition, it's critical. And also they learn to manage instead of lead. And I think that's where we talk about different styles of leadership. They don't learn to, that they have the ability to be a transformational leader because they're learning to just manage their day-to-day -day fires and put them out. Next slide. I probably should do the boop, it might be better. Um, so when we talk about what the literature says about meeting the expectations, without formal training uh, and operations and human resource management, most informally learned on the job, they're going to learn it from, from others in practice. Uh, I always like to say be careful with this. I always liken it to the EMR training that people get when they first get hired. They learn the right way to do it, how they're going to flow. And then they get on the unit and they learn the shortcuts. <laughs> so you need to be mindful that it's okay to say, well, they'll be okay. They're going to be guided and they're going to be mentored by several people. Remember that you have an opportunity if you structure the onboarding or the orientation um, into their roles to control some of that and make sure they're getting what they need. Then transition from peer to supervisor. It's extremely stressful. It's overwhelming. And I, I can't stress this enough from my own purview. Um, administrate, but you're torn between the administrative goals and the expectations. When I transitioned, because I speak for myself, I really was excited. And then I realized I really can't celebrate. It would seem that people's affects and moods had changed about it. They were all supportive until I was there. And then it became a different animal. And then I had to decide what hill am I on? Because it became a very um, internal dialogue that I had to have with myself a lot about what am I supposed to do. And those are things to keep in the forefront of conversations with um, new leadership because they may not say it out loud, but these are things that they're going to feel. And then red flags or just to keep an eye on too is you might have, you know, a clinical nurse expert that's shifted into a leadership role. They're not meeting deadlines. They're not seeming to be able to get things done. They're not responsive to emails, but what they are doing is their staff love them because they're out on the unit at the bedside which is great, but remember, they're, not, they're going to their comfort spot because they don't have what they need in the, 
in, in their role as a leader. So it's looking at that differently instead of going, they can't meet timelines or this, they're that, they're not, they're disorganized. Maybe there's something deeper to that. And maybe there's something that we need to do to help support them differently. And then also being inadequately prepared makes nurse managers more insecure and increase their stress levels, which we talked about. And I think self-worth is such a stronger word, um, but I think it's a very valid uh, word to use for that. Okay. Again, these were some studies, and I actually really loved these from my project because I think it does really reel in and harness why it's important. And this is really what this is about. If we keep sitting around discussing why it's important, but we're not putting it into action, then we're not really doing anybody any favors. Um, Fitzpatrick's and his colleagues actually did a quantitative uh, longitudinal survey design where they took a six, four hour sessions over three to six month period and they did a pre and a post. And what they found um, when they did this was there was a significant increase, not only in their leadership practice, but they sustained it for three months post. They were using it. So when, when there's this dialogue around, oh, well, they're not going to use it, it's a waste of resource, I absolutely disagree. If it's actually targeted around the gap and what's needed, the core, they'll absolutely use it, and they'll use it again and again. And then Weston um, actually shared with Arizona Nursing Community, which I thought was amazing, they actually came together and did a partnership to create an affordable leadership education program that focused on enhancing leadership competency of their frontline nursing supervisors. And again, what did they find? Well, the lack of formal leadership for management roles and responsibility impacted negatively their relationships and communication and ability to lead their teams. But what they did find is with that education, and again, leading by example themselves by getting the education, they had actually created a healthier work environment and they were able to work towards excellence and practice. Um, O'Neill and his colleagues. Now, this one I really I loved because I think this really speaks to where maybe some of our support or the ability to get hardwired um, this process is. It, they did a telephone survey of healthcare leaders, um, and it was an environmental scan, basically, of leadership uh, management programs. What they found is the nurse leaders understood the development of nurse managers and leaders for the continuum. The non-nurse leaders felt that it was more of an intervention to fix things rather than a continuum. And I think that speaks volumes. So if Tim's not talking nice to, to, to Jane, we're gonna do crucial conversations for everybody and that's how we're gonna fix that problem instead of hardwiring that as a part of the standard of practice and, and um, orientation. So Radovich actually did a really neat one too, where he had four critical care managers. And what I like is that there's diversity in them. One of them's new, one of them was promoted. And then there was two that had been managers for four years. So there's across the spectrum. And they use simulation-based training. And I think this is so underused, which is, is um, and these are at your resources. Simulation doesn't mean a lab. It can also mean face-to-face -face using HR, your risk department, but they found that by doing that, it, the novice nurses and the others also felt that they had increased confidence to do their job. They had more job satisfaction, they felt more capable to do their skills. And I kind of um, look at this like when we were nursing students and we started the IVs on the fake arms, and then we went to do the, the real one, and we told them, oh, and they asked you if you'd ever done it before, and you said, oh, yeah, yeah, I've done it before. We just didn't tell whole truth. But in this case, you get to practice and you get your confidence up. So when you have to do it for the real deal, it's much smoother. And that's what I had to do with my personnel issue. I had to sit down with the director of HR and practice how I was going to handle the situation. Okay. So I want to talk about next, because I know we, we talk about this a lot and everything. So where do you start with this? How can you even start? Well, and you know, the saying goes, you eat um, an elephant one bite at a time. So I started to process because, you know, you can't be prescriptive. Every, every culture is going to be different. Every organization is going to have different things set up. But one of the great things that you have is there's resources at your fingertips to look at. How does this, should this look? What could this look like? Um, one of the amazing things is the ANCC um, for the certification for nurse executive and nurse executive advanced. Their test content outlines are available online. And I'm right now showing the nurse executive and it shows you primary, the predominant areas to focus. And the great thing about this is when you were trying to get your return on investment, you could say that by structuring your onboarding or your formal uh, orientation for your leaders, you're also preparing them for, to sit for certification, which I think is amazing. And it hits all of your heavy things. The major domains of practice, structure and processes, leadership, professional practice, knowledge management. Uh, the other thing you could do 
Um, your American Organization of Nurse Leaders also has a set of competencies that can also be followed and, and can align for the onboarding um, organization. And partnerships with local universities. Uh, you probably all have like a local university that you can look into to see if they do a partnership for leadership training or development. What you might find is um, you have great opportunities that you may not have even known you had. The piece around this that I will say um, as a plug, when you start these off, I really think it's important to level the playing field and that anyone and everyone should be involved in the training. Meaning that, you know, so Sally, you know, clinical expert, you decide to start this and give training. Incorporate that training for your other leadership so everybody's getting the same information. Also, um, your learning module systems, your learning management systems, there's modules in there. You may find, surprisingly, um, there's a lot of ones that you could utilize to start building a framework for just initial um, orientation structure to help with the competencies. It's, it's really important, and the competencies that you would use are going to really be dependent on your needs. But most leadership, it's pretty, if you look at the categories and domains of practice, it pretty much falls in line with those items. Okay, next slide. And of course, I, I have to speak to the Pathway to Excellence program. Um, many of you may or may not be designated or on your journey. If you're not, um, Tom, please feel free to share my contact information um, as I'm more than willing to answer more questions. But the Pathway to Excellence standard, I also say, is a wonderful framework um, to help support positive practice environment as well as help structure support for leadership development succession planning. That is so key. And if you look at our six um, standards, we have shared decision making, leadership, safety, quality, well being, professional development. And all through these steps, it's going to help to guide you to transform your culture and also help leaders sustain and get um, better support. And with Pathway, it also addresses a range of factors. It's going to not only help you retain your choice nursing staff, but also your leaders, get higher job satisfaction and increase safety, uh, reduce errors. And it's also going to increase your patient satisfaction, satisfaction and productivity and teamwork. So I would like to touch on as well, um, just for the, we're going to be coming up with a 2020 manual update. And I'm really excited because recognizing that transition into practice and leadership succession planning is such a priority. We will be adding in some um, additional areas of focus for our evidence of practice. Some will be nurse manager role specific orientation, um, organizational strategies to maintain positive practice environments during executive leadership change, and strategies to retain senior nursing leadership and nurse managers, and as well as organized fall organizations that foster leadership succession planning. And I think that's one of our key things too with succession planning is to make sure we have those conversations up front so that we're better preparing individuals and our teams when the transition occurs, if possible. So again, high level, uh, but a lot of this information, I feel some of it hopefully will help you to be able to bring to the table a conversation around supporting and fortifying um, your programs for onboarding your nursing competent transition into practice. Um, we give this much to our nurse residents because we recognize that there was a need. Let's try to be proactive and be ahead of this. Um, and adequately preparing your nurse leaders is a smart investment. They are the forefront. They are the ones that are living and, and breathing your strategy and your goals in the organization. So we really need to be putting them at the forefront. And I want to leave with the quote that I, I actually embraced uh, in my, <clears throat> my tenure where I was. If you're going to achieve excellence in big things, you develop the habit in little matters. Excellence is not an exception. It is a prevailing attitude. And that was by Colin Powell. And what I usually would say if somebody asked me about uh, changing something or because something was different and we didn't need to do it that way, I would always just say excellence is not an exception. And guess what? And there's not a lot of things people could say to that. So when we talk about the little things that matter, it's the, hind the hindsight of saying we should have done better. Why don't we go ahead and do better now so that when we go into achieving the excellence and big things, it's taken care of. And that would be helping to facilitate a better structure for transitioning our nurse, um, our nurse leaders into their roles. Um, I also would like to um, just promote that uh, we are on um, 
Next slide. We are on social media, uh, LinkedIn at the American Nursing Credentialing Center, uh, Facebook at ANCC Pathway to Excellence Conference, which is coming up, Twitter at ANCC Official, and at Pathway underscore team. I would love to go on there and see a ton of you following us after the presentation. Um, and then our next slide is just to let you know that our Pathway to Excellence Conference will be at West Palm Beach, May 13th through the 15th. And we will hope to see you there. And I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And now it's time if anybody has any questions. Great, thanks again, Jennifer. Uh, that was really a wonderful presentation. We do have a couple of questions given time. I think we'll just narrow it down to one. Um, one question that we received uh, it says, Jennifer, you shared the test content outline from ANCC's Nurse Executive Board certification exam with leadership identified as one of four domains of practice. What would you suggest we do first in building leadership effectiveness? Well, that's a really good question. And one of the first thing is, I always say it's an inside job. <clears throat> so first thing about leadership um, effectiveness is you have to make sure your leaders are aware of who they are as leaders. Because until you can identify that, it's gonna be uh, a bigger problem. What that means is, you know, you want to look at self-reflection, personal leadership evaluations. How about integrating that diversity and sensitivity, meeting their team members where they are, remembering that um, their prevailing, their mood is not the prevailing mood for the unit. Succession planning, I talked about that. Have that conversation up front about who would be the person that you, if anything were to happen, do it up front. Even if you don't have the thing that you're going to leave, it is always better to do it up front and have that kind of goal guiding um, and the team's ready. Create an environment to engage and empower your team. But again, it's an inside job. If you were to ask me how to do that, I would say that you absolutely, it's an inside job. You have to learn yourself. Great, we've got one more question I thought was good here too. Our nurse managers say they are too busy for leadership training. Can you give us a good re uh, response to that objection? You know, the fact that there's an objection, I think is a deeper rooted issue. So I would first, as as, coming at it not wanting to be snarky and say, you need to clear your calendar. I would actually look at what's happening. What is on their plate? Is it unrealistic? Is it unreasonable? And you, if it's not something that's by a regulated entity, are there things that can be changed? But the other thing is, your leadership should also be putting just as much of a priority on their own growth and development to be better and do better. Because honestly, the team, their staff is watching them. And we have to support that they understand the priority of going and being a part. So I think unfortunately it's twofold. I think you need to investigate what they're so busy with. Um, and then secondly, you need to make it a prioritize it and help them understand that that's for their growth and development and that the other items can wait. Great. Well, we're now at the bottom of the hour here. Thanks again, Jennifer, for the presentation today. I hope everyone on the call found it valuable. Again, we'll be distributing this to you uh, as a link in the form of an email, and uh, you can expect that that will be coming shortly. Uh, also, we just thank you for your time today and, uh, and for tuning in onto the importance of preparing and supporting nurse managers. Take care, everyone. Have a great afternoon. Bye.